It is Wednesday, June 17. Welcome to CJN News. In Jamaica, the 20-year David versus Goliath legal battle between Paymaster Jamaica Limited and Paul Lowe over breach of copyright ended with the Supreme Court ordering the company to pay the computer programmer and software developer $282 million in damages. Interest at 6% was awarded on the sum covering the period August 2000 to June 2020. Lowe's attorney, Vincent Chen, said the interest would bring the total amount payable to his client to just over $600 million. Justice Lisa Palmer Hamilton said Lowe suffered financial losses because of an injunction that prevented him from selling his bill payment software locally and internationally. Paymaster, a bill payment company founded by Ambassador Andre Marx, had brought a claim against Grace Kennedy Remittance Services Limited, GKRS, and Lowe after the computer programmer sold the bill payment software to the food and financial conglomerate to launch its subsidiary, Bill Express. Paymaster, which contended that it had exclusive rights to the software, which Lowe had first sold it to, obtained an injunction in the Supreme Court barring the programmer from selling his software. Lowe and GKRS were successful in the Supreme Court in the claim against them as the court ruled that Lowe was the owner of the software. Chen said the size of the award to Lowe makes it a landmark case. Haiti has moved closer to recording 4,500 positive cases of the coronavirus on Tuesday after the authorities on the French-speaking Caricom country said 132 new cases and three deaths were reported over the past 24 hours. Haiti is by far the leading Caricom country with cases of the virus. The Ministry of Public Health said that most of the cases are men and that the three new deaths in the west and northwest had brought the total to 76. In Barbados, international passengers from COVID-19 hotspots and epicenters will face quarantine at a government facility or at a hotel at their own expense coordinated by the government, while persons from low-risk countries can quarantine at home. The Ministry of Health implemented this new policy on June 13 with the arrival of passengers on Caribbean airlines comprising mostly students from the Mona, Jamaica, and St. Augustine Trinidad campuses of the University of the West Indies, UWI. Immediately on arrival, the passengers were swabbed, interviewed, and informed of the requirements for home quarantine, which include confinement to their residences and daily monitoring for symptoms by public health officers for 14 days. The health ministry took the decision to introduce a swabbing center at the Grantley Adams International Airport to reduce wait time and better accommodate passengers as the airport must still carry out its customs protocols and complete the newly introduced sanitization of bags as well before departing the facility. Home quarantine is also allowed on a case-by-case -case basis for passengers with medical conditions or family situations which cannot be accommodated at this state-run facilities. Healthcare workers in Trinidad have taken to the streets to protest pay increments owed to them. This week, acting leader of government business Clarence Rambarat confirmed that workers attached to the North Central Regional Health Authority, the NCRHA, will begin receiving their outstanding payments by the end of the month. Rambarat said by the end of June, 25% of the arrears will be paid and the remainder will be paid thereafter. However, the workers said 25% is not enough and called on the authorities to pay them all their outstanding monies now. They demanded definitive answers on when they would be paid their arrears. Overseas now, Ghana's president has announced that Health Minister Kweku Ajiman Manu has contracted COVID-19 and is undergoing treatment at a hospital. In a state broadcast Sunday night, President Nana Akufu Addo said, the health minister had contracted the virus in his line of duty, leading the West African nation's fight against COVID-19. Ghana has one of the highest numbers of confirmed cases in Africa because of its robust testing with more than 11,400 cases. Health authorities have reported 51 deaths. News of the health minister's illness further fueled worries as Ghana's universities prepared to reopen Monday so students in their final year of study can take exams. 
French President Emmanuel Macron vowed to stand firm against racism and said France should take a fresh look at its relations with Africa. However, he insisted that France will not take down statutes of controversial colonial era figures as has happened in some other countries in the wake of George Floyd's death in the U.S. and ensuing worldwide protests against racial injustice. After multiple protests in France in recent weeks, he promised to be uncompromising in the face of racism, anti-Semitism, and discrimination. Amid calls for taking down statues tied to France's slave trade or colonial wrongs, Macron warned against the dangers of trying to rewrite history. He said the Republic will not erase any trace or any name from its history. It will not take down any statue. Mexico has started removing some restrictions imposed to stem the spread of COVID-19. Though deaths and new cases continue to rise in one of Latin America's worst hit countries, according to Johns Hopkins University, the country has Latin America's second highest death toll after Brazil. In Mexico City, factories reopened on Tuesday under strict sanitary rules a day after travel curbs were lifted. In the state of Baja California Sur, popular with tourists, some hotels and restaurants also resumed activities. Mexico has confirmed more than 150,000 infections and about 17,500 deaths. However, the true numbers are thought to be much higher because of insufficient testing. Under a phased reopening announced by Mexico City's authorities, about 340,000 factory workers returned to their jobs on Tuesday. Small shops will be able to reopen on Thursday, while professional services and some other workers are allowed to go back from Friday. President Andres Manuel López Obrador is eager to restart the economy, and his government announced a phased plan to lift restrictions. But critics say he was slow to impose the measures and now has been too quick to lift them. That's it for CGN News. I'm Scott Wilson. Thanks for watching.